Hi, my name is Will Tallheimer, and I'll have answers for you in a moment, but first, a little background. I'm a learning consultant. My work is research-based, inspired by the research found in top-tiered scientific journals. People hire me to audit their learning programs, to help them build more effective learning, to consult, to provide workshops, to give keynotes, etc. The research I'm going to share with you on learning objectives, I came to know while kneeling at the feet of the brilliant learning researcher Ernst Rothkopf. Ernie and a handful of other researchers became intrigued about the potential for helping learners by presenting them with learning objectives. Their work was seminal, but now it is largely lost to history. With this video, I hope to resurrect the research. Let me start with a little history lesson. It all began with one man, Bob Mager, who, back in the 1960s, was the king of the instructional objective. We worshiped his work. But then, seemingly, out of nowhere, a lightning bolt started. Based on the research of folks like Rothkopf, Billington, and others, a researcher named Hamilton reviewed the scientific research and concluded, an objective that generally identifies the information to be learned will produce robust effects including other information, per Mager's 1962 definition, will not significantly help, and it may hinder the effects of the objectives. The researchers were right. Presenting learning objectives to learners is not always a straight road to success. But Mager's recommendations have stuck with us, despite the research. Are we right to retain his recommendations? We are, but we have to know when, we have to know why, and we have to have a deep understanding of the human learning system, the kind of depth that only scientific research can provide. Let's look first at Mager's criterion for instructional objectives, then we'll look at the science. Mager says that each instructional objective ought to include three criteria. Number one, the performance the learner should be able to do. Number two, the conditions under which they should be able to achieve that performance. And number three, the criteria for acceptable performance. Now let's look at the science. This is a classic study by Rothkopf and Billington. Of the dozens and dozens of scientific studies on instructional objectives, this is the most important one. What the researchers did was divide the learning material into two sets of concepts. Some would be targeted by learning objectives, some that wouldn't be. You can see here that sometimes they did not present learners with objectives, and sometimes they did. Let's look at the results. When they didn't provide any learning objectives, the information targeted by learning objectives and information not targeted was learned about the same. However, when they did present learning objectives, the information not targeted was learned a whole lot worse than that that was targeted by learning objectives. And not only that, but the information not targeted was learned worse than if there had been no objectives at all. As you can see, learning objectives are a double-edged sword. So how do learning objectives work? Well, let's take a look. Here's our learner. She's gonna be presented with a whole bunch of learning material. Before that, we're gonna present her with learning objectives. She's gonna read them, they're going to go into her long-term memory. So she'll read them, they go into working memory, then into long-term memory, and there they'll sit. So for example, you will learn about how wheat was once threshed by hitting it with a flail. Note something about that learning objective. Some of those words are more salient than other of the words. Some are more important. Here's why. When she starts encountering the learning material, she's going to encounter these words. Wheat because when she encounters the word wheat, it's going to trigger the internal representation of the learning objective, which is in long-term memory. Same thing with the other words. Now the key here is when that gets triggered, she is then going to uh, utilize attentional resources to pay more attention to those aspects of the learning material that are targeted by that learning objective. It's all about attention, focusing the learner's attention where it needs to be focused. One of the things we have to realize is that our learner's attention wanders. It's not always riveted. It's not always focused. 
So learning objectives are a way to refocus, re-energize the learner's attention to focus on the most important aspects of the learning material. Here's some more research. No objectives, information not targeted by objectives, information targeted by objectives, you can see the same result. Information that's targeted by objectives is learned better, not targeted is learned worse. Okay, so number one, number one thing you should write down, get into memory, remember, learning objectives can support learning, but there's a caveat here. Number 1A is learning objectives can hurt learning. We've already seen that. Okay, here's some more research. No learning objectives, generally worded learning objectives, specifically worded learning objectives. Here's some other research. You'll notice the finding. If the learning objectives are specifically worded, they're gonna maximize learning. If they're only worded in a general way, they're not gonna maximize learning. This brings us to another point. Number two, words matter. They must be specific enough to be triggered by the words that will be used in the learning material. There has to be a one-to-one -one correspondence. Number two, A, words that aren't salient don't matter. So the word the, the word this, the word and, they're not gonna make much of a difference. Neither is the word understand. So it's okay to use the word understand in a learning objective. You know, we have to be careful here. One of the reasons there's so much confusion in the field over this is that we keep using one word, one term to mean many different things. Let's stop using learning objective for the kind of things we're talking about with this research. Let's use the word focusing objective. They're focusing objectives because they help learners focus. They help learners pay attention to the things that are targeted by the learning objectives. So we have to reword these things. Number one, focusing objectives can support learning. Focusing objectives can also hurt learning. The words matter. In focusing objectives, they must be specific enough to be triggered by the words that will be used in the learning material. Number two A, words that aren't salient don't matter. So it's okay to use the word understand in a focusing objective. The bottom line here is that focusing objectives work because they trigger our learners' attentional resources. So why does it work this way? Again, we have to look at the research. And this time, we have to understand something about ourselves as human beings that we don't always like to admit. We humans like to think of ourselves as highly proactive, but the truth is that our thoughts and actions are almost entirely triggered by external stimuli. We perceive external stimuli and we respond instantaneously with thoughts and actions. It's the same with learning objectives. They sit in long-term memory, waiting to be triggered by stimuli within the learning material. Remember the Rothkopf-Billington research I showed you before? Note how they looked at eye movements. They actually hooked learners' eyes up with electrodes and watched where they looked in the learning material. What they found was that learners paid more attention to the learning material that was targeted by learning objectives, and they paid less attention to the learning material that was not targeted by objectives. So once again, we see that this is how learning objectives work. So number three, objectives focus learner attention. But there's a corollary one that may be a little bit shocking. We don't need focusing objectives because other things can guide learner attention. Oh my, the ramparts of instructional design tradition are crumbling, crumbling, crumbling. In truth, there's many ways to guide learner attention. We can simply tell our learners when to pay attention. Hey, this is important. We can repeat things, not verbatim necessarily, but when we repeat things, it sends a message to learners that this is important. We can also make things relevant, relevant to their work, to their lives. When things are relevant, learners pay attention. We can also curate complex concepts and simplify them so that learners have an easy time getting their heads around them. And finally, we can use design elements. So for example, in our visual materials, we can use white space, bolds, headings, 
uh, appropriate graphics. In our other learning materials, we can use organization, we can use media. The fact is there are a myriad of ways to guide learner attention without resorting to the time-tested methodology of boring our learners with learning objectives. Really, now that we know what we know about the human cognitive architecture, does it make sense to have the same exact objective be used for both learners and for us as learning designers? To answer this question, we need to start with the fundamentals. What is an objective anyway? What is an objective? It's a statement that guides behavior. It guides the behavior of individuals, it can guide the behavior of groups, but it's guiding the behavior of somebody. Well, who are our objectives for? Are they for us as learning professionals or are they for our learners? Hmm, here's where the problem came off. Here is where the gears disengaged in our industry, in the learning and performance and education industries, this is where we got confused. Mager wrote his criteria for instructional objectives for us as learning professionals. But then somehow, somewhere, somewhere along the way, somebody decided to present those learning objectives to our learners. And that's where the wheels went off the track. It's a real problem. This is the nightmare. This is where the nightmare came from that all our confusion around learning objectives is from. Okay, let's disambiguate this. For learners, we might have these kind of learning objectives. We might have table of contents objectives. Here's what you're gonna learn. Probably doesn't have a lot of learning effect, but it's kind of a nice thing to do, tell the learners. We might tell them what performance we expect, performance objective. We might give them reasons that they ought to be motivated, a bunch of motivation objectives. We might give them, hey, focusing objectives. There could be other things as well. For developers, we might have instructional design objectives. We might have evaluation objectives. What are the things that we're gonna hold ourselves accountable to. We might have situation objectives. One of the things the learning research tells us is that job relevant, context relevant decision making is critical in learning design. So why don't we have a list of the situations we expect our learners to be able to perform in? A list of situation objectives and organization objectives. What is our organization hoping to get out of this? I've listed eight types of learning objectives here, but there could be more. This is just examples. The key point here is we should not confuse them. The research I've shown you is related to focusing objectives. Focusing objectives are for learners. No, 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 not for developers, for learners. Focusing objectives are for learners. They help learners focus on the targeted information, the information we want them to have. So, some key points. It's okay to use the word understand in a focusing objective. Woohoo! It's damn silly to force the use of action verbs. Remember the words like list, describe, explain. You don't have to use those because they're not salient. They don't make a difference in a focusing objective. In fact, if anything, they're demotivating. What learner wants to list a bunch of things? Which one, what learners want to explain stuff? They want to do that, they want to do stuff. They want to be able to perform something. It is absolutely ridiculous that over time, we forced ourselves with these ridiculous action verbs. Oh my goodness, it drives me nuts. All right, Whew. finally, remember the research. We must use wording that connects. Not only does it have to be specifically written, but it has to connect with our learners. It has to make sense to them. It has to be engaging and motivating. Okay, one more piece of research. This is from my dissertation. I want, I want you to know, I want you to remember that pre-questions can be as powerful as learning objectives. Okay, it's another option, another opportunity. For developers, a few things to remember. One thing particular to remember. By not presenting learners with focusing objectives all the time, 
learners will actually pay them more attention when you do present them to them. And then they'll actually work better. The learning objectives will work better if we don't overdo it. That's it, folks. Remember, scientific research helps us see things we might otherwise miss. Thanks for watching. This has been a Work Learning Research production, and this is Will Tallhammer, signing off. Okay, people, sign up. Come on, click on the link right down there. Please do it. Sign up now. Don't forget. Sign up. Uh.